Hey everyone, Drew Zapier here. Today we're gonna to be just doing something a little different. We're gonna be making hive stands for swarm traps. So today is, let's see, February 11th. It's a beautiful warm day here in Georgia. Um, everything, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll notice, and probably other beekeepers videos, that you know with the super warm weather, we've been having a lot of you know very productive queens, queens that are continuing to lay eggs. And I've been seeing a lot of drones, and usually see a lot of drones, you know, swarm season is up upon us. So this is going to be my third spring trying to catch swarms. And I am going to be doing something a little different, which is making some hive stands. Uh, I've seen a lot of beekeepers make these before. There's different ways to make them, but we're going to be making something like this. All right. So this is all just junk wood you know recycled wood either I got it you know like this is just pallet wood that Home Depot or Lowe's was just gonna throw away so I didn't pay anything for this and some of these other things I've just found laying around either in the attic or wherever again pallet wood right here so you know I don't you know wood lumber has been pretty expensive I know it went down a little bit the past few months but it's still very pricey so anyway you guys if you're interested in making something like this that you can source it uh, from scrap I would suggest you do so because these pieces don't have to be of the best build quality and I myself am not a carpenter. you will be able to tell that just based upon this, but I will tell you that this will work for what it's going to be used for because essentially this right up here is where it's going to be hung on the tree. We'll just use this tree as an example. Final product, I get a step ladder. Obviously you want to get high up in the, you know, the tree as much as you can, but the idea is basically going to be that this is going to be hanging the tree and then we're going to have our swarm trap up above it. So a box, I'm going to be using, you'll kind of see pre-existing bee equipment to do that. Some people will actually build their own swarm boxes and that's great if you can do it. I don't have the tools here to be constructing that or to be able to make them effective. I don't have a table saw, I don't have any of those kind of things and I don't want to be paying other beekeepers um, to make swarm traps for me. So I'm going to be using pre-existing high bodies and pre-existing supers to make my swarm trap. So that way I can reuse those at a later time. So without further ado, we're going to make one of these. We're going to show you how to make one. Really, it's, it's really not that complicated. I mean, to put it in perspective, these are just like basically two by twos, these two components. So you just, you need a straight flat one for your base that the actual swarm trap is gonna rest on. And again, I'm putting a high body on it, but you could also just make your own box if you wanted to have recycled plywood or whatever. This is also a two by two. The only difference is you wanna make sure you're cutting these at a 45 degree angle. So it needs to sit, you know, flush right here with the bottom of this and then at a 45 degree angle down there. And then this, this is actually overly thick, this piece of wood that I'm using. You probably don't need something that thick. So I'm gonna use something a little lighter. Um, but the whole thing is making sure that however you're securing it, in this case, it's gonna be drilled in the tree uh, twice um, just to make it more secure. So, and you know, definitely use a screw, don't use a nail. So you're gonna to wanna to take these down because they're not pretty to look at when they're hanging out there. But um, I'm just gonna be using for drill bits, or I'm sorry, not for drill bits, for screws, just some exterior wood screws something like that. These are two and a half by nine. You could probably go a little bigger. These are perfect for actually just constructing this, but if you're gonna drill this into the tree, I would suggest a size slightly bigger than this because this probably, it'll do, but it's it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be ideal. So, I'll leave that there. Like I said, finished product, we're going for. So, the first thing I suggest that you do is, depending on what components you have, like I said, I already have what's going to be my backer, so this is what's going to hang in the tree. This is a much thinner, lighter piece of, piece of junk wood. Uh, this, I'm not going to cut at all. <clears throat> if you're curious about what the measurement is for your backer, again, you can make it pretty much any size. Let's see, this is a little over, this is maybe like three and a half foot long. Okay put that into perspective and like I said we mainly want we mainly want the um, uh, 
the actual back, like the, the base piece and the bottom the base piece. Those, if I remember correctly, I think those are exactly two by three. Exactly. Let's see, I think that's 36 inches. Nope, that's 24. That should also be 24. Close, a little shy. Like I said, this should be. Yep. 46 inches. So. If you want, I can leave those measurements in the bottom description for you all. If you're in interested in modeling the same after that. But again, you don't have to make it any specific size, size like for length. The key thing is that when you do hang it, that there's enough room for whatever your swarm trap is going to be. And the reason why mine is as long as it is and why it's as high as it is is because I am going to essentially have the equivalent of a super and a deep on top as my swarm trap. So that way the volume is enough space that a swarm is actually going to want to move into it. So I'm going to start getting this set up. I'll probably be quiet. You might hear me talk every now and again, but that'll be pretty much it for now. So let's begin. Like I said, this is basically a two by three. Um, 36 inches long. I'm going to be cutting it down to about like, two feet exactly, 24 inches. And that's just like the perfect length, in my opinion, to fit both, you know, depending on how long you're actually going to make your swarm trap, but also it's like the perfect fit for if you're going to use like a solid bottom, uh, bottom board or, you know, pre-existing B equipment to rest on it. It's like, it sits just right on there. And then, you know, you ratchet strap it down, you got yourself a pretty good stand of it. Apologies for my very cheap saw board. Again, I don't have a tool shed, so I gotta make sure it's what I got. need that's gonna be our base for our backer I just marked exactly where I want our base to be resting at so I'm just gonna get a pilot hole drilled I think this is just a 1 8 bit but let's just get a pilot hole started and that's okay to go all the way through this because this is what's gonna go through on the other side. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to use a different drill. I already got set up with a star bit. Take those exterior, exterior screws that we were using. And that piece. got one in there right now just to get started. I recommend putting two if you can. Just give it a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, you don't have to. I just want a stronger base. So that's on. And the nice thing too is if you do decide to take this apart, like if you have issues storing it, this isn't a very, you know, collapsible design. This is just a very bare minimum with the equipment that I've got. You know, you can always take your screws out. You know, you're not nailing this thing together. So just unscrew it, you can put it to put it to the side if you need it for portability purposes, put it in your attic, wherever you're gonna put it, but for now. That's my recommendation. So the next thing you're gonna do is this piece, I already had it kind of pre-cut from an earlier one that I made. 
right here at the 45 degree angle. You're gonna need to do the same up here. Uh, I just recommend for now, depending on equipment you have, you can eyeball it and just kind of draw a mark as to how you're gonna cut. Right there, I just kind of made it a 45. And so the idea is that'll sit right there, that'll be right there, should connect, then you'll just drill it all together. So let's get this piece back up on the sawhorse and knock that out. And there you have it. Close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, these are just as a way to hang up swarm traps. There's multiple different ways to do it. This is just one way you can do it. Uh, my goal this year is hang a few. I, I probably don't have the means of hanging a bunch out there. I know you have better chances of catching, just like fishing, catching swarms in this case, but you know, Again, as we said at the beginning, wood is expensive and I don't have enough of this junk lumber, nor do I have enough of the high bodies that I want to use to um, facilitate making that many swarm traps. My goal is the, whatever high bodies or supers that I use in this process are easily gonna be able to be converted back into their normal format. So, you know, some people will build a swarm trap and that's all it's good for. My goal is when the boxes come off the swarm trap, they can be used like a normal box. So. Anyways, I'm gonna just drill this in. There's not much else to it, and I'll show you the final product. So this is pretty much the final product. Obviously, you see it kind of swaying. This is not secured at this point, but what you would do when you come up here, this would obviously be a bit higher up on the tree, you know, almost double this height. You would say like between eight and 10 feet off the ground if you can. Um, I'm 6'2", so literally where the top of my eye is, is right here. So. I'd bring a step ladder if you can to get it a little bit higher. Um, I try to get mine facing south, just like I have my hives facing. But as far as getting it secure, these aren't like true ratchet straps. If you have ratchet straps, great. These are just like those mini ratchet straps, like the mini buckles, um, cam buckles, I think is what they call them. But use a long screw for your top one, especially really for, for all the ones that are attached to the, to the tree. Um, I would recommend one here, one here, and one there, or at least two, but the more secure the better. That way it doesn't do all the swaying. Strap is a must. Um, if you had the ability to make a wider baseboard, great. Uh, I'm just using what I have. I'm using the skinny one because it'll, it'll stand. And then if you want to make it even more secure, I would probably put another two or three star screws, maybe one going into the bottom of the solid bottom or whatever bottom board you're using uh, and then maybe if you'd like to do a second one not a bad idea but at least a minimum of one because you think when the time comes let's say you are lucky enough you did catch a swarm you go to wherever this is at you know in my case mine will be spread out in my area uh, you want to get up and there quick so obviously you bring your step ladder you would bring your drill so that way you can get those star screws out um, Right here, I know that this top entrance is, or the front entrance is open. I would have this blocked off ahead of time. My goal is on my custom supers to drill out with a hole screw, or I'm sorry, with a hole saw, just a little hole and use one of those discs. I, I should have brought some out. When, when you see my later part of this, you'll see the actual silver disc that you can open and close. So that way when I have to take this and transport, it'll be a lot easier, but you don't have to do that. You could just use, you know, two um, entrance reducers or an entrance reducer that can fully block this off. Just keep in mind if you're traveling with the bees from one place to another, you don't want them to overheat and die. So you want to make sure that they're ventilated. However you do that, that's up to you. But again, this is pretty much it. So um, the next part of this video, like I'm not sure this will be one series or if this will be a, a two-part series, will be them actually being put in place and uh, how you actually bait the trap essentially. So. Hope you got something out of this. 
If you did, um, please like and subscribe. That definitely helps me out a lot getting this video out to other either people that are just interested in the hobby or other beekeepers, whatever it might be. Um, either way, hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Hey everyone, one other thing I wanted to go over. I know in the last part of this video, you saw me hang up the uh, one of these swarm traps up in the tree. And I talked about stability. Since then, this is a couple days later after that filming, I just wanna add it on the tail end of this video. I did two modifications. One, if you were gonna make a swarm trap with the type of baseboard I used on the, the bottom, I would suggest building these additional supports. So I'm gonna put all the measurements that I, I used for this at the bottom in the description, but you know it's one of those things where you know you can make this as secure as you want in the side of the tree and with the ratchet strap. Um, but why tempt fate? And so I wanted to build just kind of two really tiny little wooden supports. Again, still scrap wood, especially if I'm going to be putting a full size hot body on this. Some people you see just put the straight flat piece of wood. Um, I don't have something skinny enough, long enough of those dimensions to use for that. That's why I had these little skinny like two by fours but the last thing you want is to come out you know a week or two weeks later check on your swarm trap and it be laying on the ground so this is just going to make it a little bit more uh give it a little bit better stability in the meantime so i just kind of wanted to show that real quick again that'll be in the bottom and then if i wanted to keep that same type of simplicity without the supports you can just do a wider base so i don't know if i'm necessarily going to put a deep high body on this but if I want to tempt with a, a nuke as a swarm trap, which you know, you probably aren't gonna have the best luck catching swarms with a nuke, but if I have the boxes available right now, which I do without buying more, I might as well try using them. And this will be perfect for a nuke. Uh, this isn't the thickest wood. So, you know, I question whether it's gonna be able to stand up to holding a full size high body, let alone with bees on the inside. But I think a five frame nuke, it'll fit just fine. It'll be really good to catch those smaller swarms. So I'll figure out a location I'm gonna put this at a later time, but I just wanted to show that real quick before I ended the video. So now that we're done with that, hope you all have a great week. Thank you so much, take care.